Welcome to the special video, my friends. In this video, I'm going to share what is called as pillars of DevOps. So what is pillars of DevOps? What are some fundamental pillars that we have to understand? Now, before I go further, let me ask you this normal and a very general question. What are some principal pillars of any country, right? So if you take any country, there are some building pillars, right? You might say the pillar might be everyone has the right for education, everyone has a right for vote, everyone has a right for their information, et cetera. If you understand the pillars properly, you will understand what needs to be learned to be aware and conquer this particular service or any use, right? Similar way, there are pillars of DevOps also. And these pillars of DevOps actually can guide you towards becoming a very good DevOps engineer. And that is what I'll be discussing in this video. <clears throat> Before I go further, my friends, I would like to let you know that I have prepared a new course that is 50 DevOps interview questions and answers 2022. It's a very latest course. If you are any one of the person who has taken a DevOps training, and wants to start attending the interviews, then, and you can take this course because in this course, I'll be discussing 50 various DevOps interview questions and answers. Remember, I'll also be discussing the answers. I'll also be telling you how to answer these questions in the interview. So the link is in the description. If you want to speak to me regarding any DevOps discussions, you can also go into the description and select the meeting link. You can select a calendar time and we can have a 30 minutes free discussion over any DevOps topics or career guidance. So what are some key DevOps pillars? Uh, you can see it on my screen. We have different DevOps uh, pillars and I will share you some insight around all of this as we go. The first one, uh, the first one that we see is continuous integration. What is continuous integration? Let us say the developer uh, are preparing some code and they make a pull request. We should make sure that this pull request is valid. There is no bug. It is of proper format. And we have we zip this or create a jar file or var file for this. This is called as continuous integration. Uh, once this PR is merged, of course, you'll create a jar and var file. This is called as continuous integration. What are the tools that can help us here? Jenkins, correct. And you have uh, GitLab if you want. Then GitHub Actions, etc. This is continuous integration, which is the first pillar. The next one is continuous delivery. What is the difference between continuous delivery and continuous integration? Very simple. If you have your code, updated, it doesn't mean you have to deploy it. It is not a must to deploy, okay? It is not a must to deploy it. But if you want, you can create a continuous integration and continuous delivery, meaning the moment the code is updated, it can get deployed. That is an option, definitely, but not required all the time. What is continuous delivery? What are some famous tools? Again, Jenkins will come into picture, right? Then there is a tool called as Harness which is a very great CD tool. Again, GitHub Actions can do a lot of things, et cetera. After that comes the principles of microservices. Now this varies. Uh, the above information I'm picking is actually from AWS, right? So I'm picking the pillars from AWS. So they have mentioned microservices. Should I know as a developer how to create a microservices? As a DevOps engineer, as a developer, definitely you know, but as a DevOps engineer, if you know the basics around this, it is going to be super helpful for you. So how are APIs built? Okay, how are DBs connected to APIs? What are packages? What is HTTP request? These are required for a DevOps engineer, definitely. And these are also fundamentals of any microservice you take, it doesn't matter. 
you take any company today that you plan to work with they will be having microservices and that is why as a devops engineer you should know fundamentals of any microservices needless to say the fourth one uh, up for our discussion is infrastructure as code fourth one is infrastructure as code uh, there is a clear winner here terraform you should know terraform if you are logged with aws then you can know cloud formation or cdk if you want okay but terraform is a most generalized way that is present in the market today and it is the preferred way in many companies again as a devops engineer you must be aware of this particular section also the last one is monitoring and alerting it is a very vast topic here so you might learn any tool you can learn nagios you can learn prometheus or if your organization is using any paid services then you can use that also uh, paid services uh, there are a lot of paid services available for monitoring and other thing like there is datadog splunk etc you can also use them but if you are a beginner and if you have not used any of them then pick nagios or prometheus prometheus being the most famous one and you should be uh, you can learn that and you should be aware of this concept so as you have watched all the things that i have explained to you and unfold to you it is very clear that the principles or the pillars of devops leads you also to your career road map so if you are wondering what i should learn this is where you have found your answer learn one tool in each of this pillar in each of this pillar you have to learn one tool that is enough if you have already done that i am pretty much sure you have attempted already to achieve your result as a devops engineer and from then on it is enhancing a particular tool and that is pretty much it i forgot to mention one last thing around microservices if you are wondering it is uh, docker and kubernetes will also come here in this section so yeah again as a devops engineer it is important to know docker and kubernetes i will emphasize on docker more kubernetes is really new and a lot of people might not be aware of it but it is fine but docker you should definitely be having a good knowledge on docker and that is something that you should also learn i think you have found your answer if you are in a state of confusion what should i learn how should i learn it then i believe these five pillars have given you the answer if you have liked this video then please do like and subscribe if you have any other questions you want me to ask please mention them in the comment box i am happy to answer your question that is it for this video my friends speak to you in the next video thank you